Welcome to 65 on the Road Live here at HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. I'm Dave Nicholson and I am joined, I am bookended by the Townsends, Will and Keith. Yeah. How are you gentlemen doing? I'm doing great, Dave. Thanks for having me. Well, talk to us about the keynote. Yeah. Networking was a big theme. What was different this year from previous years? Give us your assessment of well, what we heard this morning. Shocking, agentic, right? Yeah. So one of the big announcements was uh, Aruba and its agentic uh, AI mesh. Over 15 agents that are gonna do a number of different things to facilitate root cause, troubleshoot, diagnose issues, and ultimately remediate them all with automation, really big. I do like the emphasis that HPE is playing on the importance of networking. Often that gets lost in uh, the compute and in the storage piece, but at the end of the day, if you can't move that data around, you can't train it, you can't inference off it. Right, often ignored networking. Keith, what are you thinking? So I think he gave a lot of love to networking in general. I was actually surprised. I don't think I remember a HPE Discover in recent memory that wasn't keynoted kind of by Aruba giving the vision for networking sure. and it getting elevated to the CEO level, to Antonio's level. But observability was another big point. And I, I think outside of storage, I haven't heard HPE talk about observability yeah. at all. No, Keith, it's a good point. Um, the company hasn't focused on it traditionally, although it did acquire OpsRamp, and it's been quickly integrating OpsRamp into the entire tech stack, and that includes networking as well. Um, I'm quite impressed with OpsRamp. I've spent time with the team recently, gratuitous plug. Um, I, uh, I did a webinar with the team uh, a few months ago. I also wrote something on the More Insights and Strategy website. But at a very high level, observability is very important providing visibility into the estate uh, of devices that are on a network, not only Aruba, but also multi-vendor as well. And the real advantage in doing that is twofold in, in, in my opinion. One, it provides a higher level of network assurance so that you can make networks more resilient, you can understand faults, look, you know, find gaps of visibility and that sort of thing. It also improves security posture as well, because again, it, identify, it identifies those weaker areas of the network and, uh, and I really like what the company is doing with that ops ramp integration. I, you talk about security. Zero trust is, is, is something we talk about from a security perspective. Absolutely. Um, first, I would like to coin a phrase just okay. between the three of us. Can we agree that secret agentic would be cool? That would be really cool. Okay. Secret agentic. <laughs> secret Almost agent. secret that agent. Is, uh, agentic. Is, exactly. That's, that's dead level. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's dead level. So on the subject of secret agentic, but yeah. uh, zero trust um, you know, with HPE Aruba, what does that look like? Well, I mean, it's nothing new for the Aruba team. I mean, they've been focused on least privilege access for many, many years. This dates back to uh, its AI ops. Uh, they launched something called uh, the Edge Services Platform. I actually wrote a paper about that many years ago. But what I like to tell people um, is the fact that fabrics are becoming sexy again, to quote Justin Timberlake. And, and what a fabric is, it's, it's taking networking, it's integrating security into it. And when you do that inherently, it is more secure by nature uh, when, when that is done. And, and then, you know, from my perspective also, cybersecurity is a layered approach. You're gonna have endpoint security. You're gonna have uh, security within the, uh, the infrastructure stack. Um, SASE is basically SD-WAN with uh, additional security controls. So at the end of the day, long way to answer your question, Dave, but it's nothing that's, that's new to Aruba. But what I really like is, uh, is the focus, especially with what we heard today about Green Lake Intelligence and um, what the company is doing to, to sort of drive that cloud natively through the entire stack. So wait, what's the term for that again? You said least what? Least privileged access. Least privileged access. It sounds like no soup for you. That's what <laughs> I hear. You can interpret it that That's way. That's what I hear as an end user. <laughs> so uh, following on, I can kind of pull them on that thread. We heard in the analyst session the other day and from the stage yesterday, Antonio talk about kind of the future of security and networking. Where are you seeing those worlds come together uh, this week from the keynote? 
Well, I mean, it's that conversion story that I was just talking about, the fabrics, right? And so you're continuing to see that convergence. And I think the other thing that's happening as well, at least from a security perspective within organizations, is the need to consolidate. Tool sprawl is out of control. You know, the, the stats are, are alarming. You know, an average mid-market sites company is managing 40 to 50 point solutions from a security standpoint. If you're a larger multinational footprint, it can be in the hundreds. And so there's all this discussion around platformization. That really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? But it's the whole notion of, of consolidating tool sets, um, again, integrating that into the network fabric. You know, one of the things that I don't believe HPE gets credit for is that they were actually the first to launch a smart switch with a CX-10,000. Uh, that was in 2022. You've seen competitors um, launch uh, similar products. What a smart switch is, is basically it takes DPU functionality. In the case of HPE, it's AMD Pensando. And when you do that, it allows you to embed security services like firewalls. And, and that's something that Antonio did talk about um, earlier this week. But there, there's almost a, you know, an opportunity to eliminate the traditional firewall because now you can embed virtual firewalls into switches and into network fabrics as well. So, yeah. So you actually just led into, I think, my next question, which is how is this all enabling the intelligent, what we called, you know, just a couple of years ago, the intelligent yeah. edge. Applications are getting smart, smarter. Right. That, that intelligence is being pushed out to the edge. How is networking enabling that? Well, again, uh, to support these AI workloads, you need uh, very predictable performance. Um, you can't have spikes, you can't have outages, because that totally wrecks like an agentic AI workload as an example. Uh, with generative AI, that, that, that is you know, you know, manageable, but in an agentic world, it's not manageable. So number one, that, that's important. And I think the other thing that you're beginning to see with, uh, with switches and even with access points, the compute infrastructure is coming to these edge devices. So, um, you know, Snapdragon, Qualcomm Snapdragon, is, they're doing XPUs on, in, in very, very small ASIC packages. And so that allows you to do um, things like inferencing on an, on an access point. Now, mm. we're not seeing that yet, but that, that's going to be coming by my prediction very, very soon. And so that's what's making networking intelligence is you're putting compute you know, within the, the network infrastructure layer to unlock new use cases like I just described. Yeah, a, a lot was said about networking and it makes perfect sense. And I know we sometimes think of networking as the unsung hero. Yeah. Um, obviously data is at the center of all of this. And if you can't network this data together and access this data, access the knowledge. It doesn't work. You're dead in the water. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to the top of the keynote. Okay. One word, ambition. Right. So sometimes these things can be dismissed as marketing propaganda, nonsense. I really took that to heart uh, because I have a lot of folks, folks that Keith and I talk to on mm -hmm. a daily basis who are asking, where do I start? Sure. Where do I start with AI? How do I, how do I make money? How do I save money with AI? Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is you can say it has to start with ambition. Right. Ambition equaling, I would argue, what, is the, what are you trying to solve for? Yeah. What's the opportunity you're, you're trying to pursue? Sure. We've all heard global systems integrators say that they are different because they don't talk about tools. They talk about outcomes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I really thought that the whole idea of things starting with ambition was clever. Yeah. And that that's a really good place to start from. Yeah. But, but overall, what, what kind of grade would you give the extravaganza in the sphere? I got to tell you, so this is the second year. So I was here last year. Um, and HPE was the first company to do a keynote in the sphere, so they've had a year to hone it, refine it. I, I was blown away. Uh, I just came out of a, a Q&A with Antonio, and he was talking about how a lot of that imagery that we saw today was AI generated. And the fidelity yeah. on that was incredible. The waterfall at the very, very beginning was unbelievable. But I love the fact, Dave, that you brought up ambition. And it was almost the way that Antonio dropped the mic when he exited the stage. And for me, the most impactful story and use case was St. Jude's Hospital and how they're leaning into HPE compute, HPE networking, HPE storage to save children from cancer. So for me, that was the mic drop moment. Yeah, amazing. What do you, what do you think overall? Were you, uh, 
am, uh, uh, the subject of ambition or just overall the messaging so, you're seeing? So overall, I think HPE has uh, solidified its messaging really around observability, management, this multi-vendor, because they didn't just talk about it in yep. networking. They talked about it in compute, uh, yep. managing other compute, orchestrating clouds. They're really trying to be this centralized point to come to for your hybrid infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So whether you're, you know, we, uh, you have 15 year old Gen 8 servers, or if you have the latest Gen 12 servers along with the latest Aruba networking mm -hmm. uh, ops ramp and this uh, GreenLake intelligence platform is the platform to come manage you at and uh, managing, and I, I, I agree with you, they're taking a lot of the key. Yeah. A lot of this is core Aruba technology. It is. Yeah. Well, Will, if you had to leave someone with one takeaway, yeah. um, you know, what's the TLDR on what IT leaders should think from a networking perspective that's coming out of this? Um, don't assume that your plumbing is going to be adequate to support your needs in the immediate future. Um, Agentic AI, I mean, generative AI has been transformative with co-pilots and that sort of thing. Agentic is really going to unlock the promise of automation at scale. You're going to need smart, intelligent, very fat pipes to do that. And so as, as IT decision makers are budgeting for that compute infrastructure, make sure that you also uh, budget commensurately for that networking infrastructure. Yeah, it makes sense. Well. I think it's fair to say that networking has always been cool, at least yes. according to us. We're not cool, but we've always thought it was cool. <laughs> but networking got a little attention that it absolutely deserved in the keynote today, and HPE is all over it. 465 on the road live here at HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. I'm Dave Nicholson for Keith Townsend and Will Townsend. Stay tuned for more.